Hey guys, welcome back to World of Warships. Today we're taking a look at the Columbo again, as this ship did get buffed this patch. I already looked at it and did not have the best time with it. But now that I've slowly come around to the Sicilia, I figured I should play this ship a little bit more, especially in Airship Escort, since this ship also has some nice features that make it really good in this game mode. Number one being these improved turret angles now, so you can shoot all your guns at 22 degrees, which is kind of ridiculous, allowing you to be perfectly angled to incoming armor piercing, so you're gonna take minimal damage and still shoot all of your guns. It's really strong. And compared to the Cecilia, you get that angle even at close ranges, where Cecilia has that weird uh, turrets can't fire bug or issue at uh, seven kilometers is where that actually takes effect. This ship gets it all the way to close range, which is really nice. We also have sap compared to the Cecilia. So our main guns have a little more punching power when we swap over to the alternate ammo type compared to the armor piercing. Although I'm still going to shoot a lot of IP here. Uh, I find myself oftentimes with the Columbo not having the best games when I only shoot Sap, even though it's a very, very strong ammo type. It's strong in very specific conditions where you're fighting against lower armored targets that are a lot bigger and uh, you're really trying to maximize the number of hits on softer targets. That's the idea here is to minimize overpens, not necessarily to hit uh, larger ships with more armor. So. In this case, a couple of Kerfers are coming over to this flank, also a Kremlin. Not ships we should be shooting sap at, is the idea. Also, when it comes to the Columbo, we got that nice uh, Sigma buff too, so we should be slightly more accurate. In this game specifically, I'm showing you, I'm actually running a secondary build Columbo to try, all right? It's, uh, well, I'm not gonna spoil it. We'll, we'll see how well it performs in this game. Uh, but Cecilia, of course, having sap on those secondaries allows it to do more consistent damage. This ship is more focused on lighting a lot more fires, just because these small secondaries don't actually pen much. Even if you take IFHE, they're only going to pen 18 millimeters of armor, which is just shy of the 19 millimeters you see on tier 10 battleship superstructures. Nice AP salvo there into the Ohio. That feels pretty nice. 16 AP shells is very, very strong. Even if they're 380s, uh, it's very, very strong uh, to have that many guns firing at a broadside that, at these kinds of ranges. A little awkward on the dispersion at times, but uh, still, it's a lot of shells flying at you. Kiting with this ship is a little more awkward compared to uh, pushing in, so I don't always want to do it, but it is possible to uh, kite away and still not take too much damage. You just need to be maneuvering properly and timing your salvos. It's not like you can sit this broadside and not take damage. Uh, you certainly need to be maneuvering as much as you can. Now, this Scudin is definitely a uh, legendary build, of course. That's what everybody's playing this thing as, so very annoying to deal with those airstrikes. I think they might have overdone it with that uh, legendary upgrade, not gonna lie. It's kind of hilarious to play with, but seems a little overtuned to have that many airstrikes saved up and for them to reload that quickly. But, uh,. It certainly is fun to play, so I guess we'll take it while it's here. Now that these uh, GKs are here, you can see that even the sap salvo here is only 10k into the superstructure of a GK. So we're certainly looking to find his broadside and then swap over to the armor piercing. A really nice thing about just playing these uh, Italian battleships is you have a little bit of the gun feeder baked into them. So if you take something like Sansonetti that has improved gun feeder as well, your swap time is almost the same as the old gun feeder, which would give you that uh, like eight second swap time between shells, although that required you to be fully loaded. So that does give us a nice opportunity to get a nice hit into the GK there, like 26K. Uh, pretty nice. Although we get hit for 20K in return, you can see how this kiting angle isn't quite perfect. Uh, so we do need to be considering who's reloaded and who's potentially shooting at us. But this AP slaps, man. It really does. Uh, these Sigma buffs certainly are very, very nice to see. And when you're pushing in, those turret angles are nice as well. It's not as consistent at range, obviously. That's not where this ship wants to play. But having those smokes really can help you play a little bit more aggressive. You can see that next salvo, only 15k into a GK. So a little bit of RNG required. Compared to a Cecilia, though, uh, I will say it's nice to get those smokes up a little bit quicker on the Cecilia. I think it's got a slightly better reload on the smokes. So Columbo has to wait a little bit more time between them. And of course, it doesn't last nearly as long either. So 
Better smokes over there, but still a very nice resource to have. Blind fire there does finish off that GK, and that allows us to push back in for this Kremlin. And we have AP. He's fairly broadside at a medium to close range, I would say. Uh, but it's a Kremlin, so we all know how much armor that ship has. So I'm still going to aim for Citadels in the hopes that we have enough pen, but I don't think we actually do. Yeah, <laughs> we do not have enough pen, unfortunately. But look at these angles we're able to shoot this guy at now. Uh, this was not possible before. It feels pretty nice. Uh, and in this game, we've already done a decent amount of damage, I would say. This airship escort mode is just perfect for a lot of these closer range focused brawling battleships. Uh, I'm going to be sad to see it go, to be honest with you, just because random battles is so much harder to make a ship like this work. That, like I said in the Cecilia video, that's one of the main reasons I found that ship to be decent uh, now after playing it some more in airship escort. It's just because the game mode allows you to push up so much closer to the enemy team who's also pushing in, right? As soon as we're in random battles, you're just more incentivized to camp and stay at the back of the map. So, uh, enjoy it while it's here, I guess. That's what I'll say. Enjoy it while it's here, and uh, we'll hope for it to return a little bit sooner than it did last time. And maybe for a bit longer. Only two weeks at the end of a patch. Feels kind of bad. The sap there not doing too much damage, but uh, it's trying to go for the upper bow there where we actually do overmatch through him. But didn't get the accuracy, unfortunately. Nice little bit of potential damage here from these airstrikes. They certainly inflate the potential damage numbers. They're 3.4 million potential damage or near enough. Uh, <laughs> yeah, not not necessarily a real 3.4 mil potential damage game just because these airstrikes do like, it's like 300,000, half a million potential damage per drop, something stupid like that. Uh, and it's pretty easy for them to miss if you're maneuvering properly. Citadel into a GK though, that's a pretty rare sight. He must have been turning or something, so I'm not sure how that necessarily happened, but I will gladly take it. Uh, as we end this game here, we do manage to win this game, even though we're down on the airship, right? It's been getting very close for the enemy team, but they've just run out of ships to uh, push it along. I found myself uh, in a lot of these airship games with people who just didn't understand that they needed to be in the cap circle. Like, if you spawn on the flank or in the middle, uh, where the airship starts, and uh, or the middle of the map, you really want to be playing the objective a bit. In this game, we spawn towards the final destination or the final goal, so going after these targets over here, trying to secure that end point, is a decent way to win from here. But uh, you do need to push that airship or along. In this case, we do manage to do enough at the end to win this match. So, nearly 200k, it's not bad. Uh, mostly AP salvos here, but uh, the sap can still do quite well. And yeah, not really worth it on those secondaries, huh? <laughs> Only 6,000 damage with one fire for 15k. Not the most useful, so you probably should be running a build more like this one, where we're not going secondaries, we're focused more on the main guns and survivability. Des Moines is a perfect target for sap, especially at these angles. I mean, we could do some damage with the AP, certainly, if we get citadels, but... 18k, no overpens possible. That's pretty nasty. And that was only five hits, right? Like, we got kind of unlucky with the dispersion there. Maybe some of it hit the island, so maybe not unlucky, but uh, yeah. That is a ton of damage into some of these softer targets, and that's why you're taking sap. Patri, also a very, very good target for us and our sap, but a lot of shatters there, man. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe we hit his belt armor or something, but uh, I would have thought we would have been doing much more. Missouri gets a pretty big hit into us there, too. You can see how our upper belt being well armored is a bit of a downside when we're broadside, fully arming that AP. There we go. There's the big smash with the sap. <laughs> That's more like it. But uh, it's not always the most consistent thing in the world just because of the dispersion. And sometimes you just hit those uh, armored plates and you're doing zero damage, where the AP might have punched through. Nearly finishing off the Missouri there, too, with the sap. It's decent. But uh, I'm just showing you the highlights of this game or some salvos of this game just because I want to show you that it's not all perfectly consistent with Columbo, even with this new buff of the Sigma. You can still get some really wonky dispersion and bad salvos that do 3,000 damage. <laughs> uh, it's, not, it's not the most enjoyable thing to play with something that feels a bit like a dice roll, but... Certainly when it hits, oh boy, does it smash some people. And that's where we want to be playing Airship Escort, where people are at closer ranges, and we can guarantee some more salvos like that one. 
If you do have Sansonetti, of course, he's going to be great. Anytime you get a kill, it basically makes up for your range disadvantage. And a Confederate is going to give us a nice buff as well. So, get a victory in this one. Barely managed to survive. It's a reasonably tanky ship still. Uh, it's a little bit low on HP. And when you're kiting, the armor isn't too great, in my opinion. But uh, still, it's a pretty decent battleship. It's much better than it was. But personally, I didn't really find myself enjoying it that much, even in Airship Escort. Uh, I wanted the secondaries to do a little bit more, be a little bit better, so... Honestly, I'll probably end up playing Cecilia more than uh, Columbo, at least when it comes to these modes where we're actually allowed to push in and brawl, and uh, you're not rewarded for camping it out in the back of the map. As for the build on the Columbo, I would probably recommend something like this, where you're not going secondaries. Uh, Furious to buff the reload is that's one of the weaknesses here even with reload mod uh, We're still over a 30 second reload that might contribute to just why I would enjoy a Cecilia a little more as well The reload is much worse on the Columbo for the same gun power at least when you're using AP the sap here does provide additional bonuses certainly but uh, a lot of the times I think the AP is is an ammo type you should still be using on a ship like this I have in the past said that just spam sap and it works, but uh Playing it some more, uh, I don't think that is necessarily true. Certainly that is more the case on the lower caliber guns where you're not going for citadels as much or you're not, uh, you don't have the potential to punch through some of those heavier battleship plates with the AP. But here we do, so I think we want to be using AP and SAP somewhat evenly, uh, choosing the right one for the correct time. Uh, gun feeder here helping, but it's not as good on uh, the unupgraded commanders. If we have something like Sansonetti with the gun feeder, this is a Cecilia build more likely, so don't, don't go with this, but 9.1 seconds versus 13, that shell swap time is, uh, is pretty nice. But other than that, pretty decent build. You could go fire prevention if you find yourself dying to fires instead of furious, but do want that little bit of extra reload personally. Uh, as for the equipment, again, pretty standard stuff. I like prop mod for uh, accelerating around islands, speed juking, that kind of thing can be very strong. There are times where you might just want to sit bow in to people and kind of speed juke forward and back, taking advantage of your 360 turrets that have insanely good firing angles facing forward. Not always, because just sitting bow in is a great way to get farmed down, but uh, still, it can work out. Armor here being 70 mil, that's why we were getting so many of those massive hits uh, as we were kiting. The other reason is we have a bit of a shelf back here to just catch shells very easily. Uh, not great. <laughs> certainly not great. Also back here. Uh, so kiting, you're going to take more damage, certainly. Not only because the turret angles firing backwards are much worse, but your armor isn't really meant to deal with that all that well. But at these angles where you can still fire your rear guns, that is, that's a nice amount of armor, gotta say. So uh, Columbo is certainly much better with this buff, but... Still a little bit inconsistent for my liking, and the longer reload isn't great for me personally. I also do just feel like this ship could have easily had the sap secondaries added to it, and uh, that would have been an interesting update to it as well, making it more useful at those closer ranges. More fun, in my opinion, as well. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.